Okay. Now the second session, we're going to look at turbine. Okay. We're going to look at turbine. So I'm going to show you one diagram that explain um, explain the concept of turbine. All right. So if you look at the diagram on your screen, turbine actually extract energy from fluid. As you can see uh, on, the, on the diagram, uh, let's say that the fluid here is water. So the water spraying from the water jet here, the water jet was, will hit the impeller of this uh, wheel here. So when the water hit the impeller, the impeller will turn the wheel here, all right? So the rotation will happen. So this kind of rotation will generate energy. It will turn the mechanical uh, mechanical energy into electrical energy or other energy. Okay. So as you can see here, this is a bit different from the pump or from the uh, fan that we learned previously. Turbine basically is just extract the energy that impose on them, extract energy from the fluid itself. The turbine can turn is because of the energy that they extract from the fluid itself. So as you can see from the diagram here, it will turn as you uh, as the water hitting the impeller here. Okay. Um, there are two type of turbine. One is uh, impulse and reaction. Okay, impulse and reaction. So the one that you're seeing here is impulse turbine. I highlight the keyword here. So the force of the blade is produced, meaning the blades here, is produced because of the uh, fluid here. Okay, fluid here. Um, okay. And then the one is the reaction. Reaction, uh, the forces is a um, re reaction to accelerate the float relative to the fin. This one I'll show you later. Okay, so turbine, you have the Pelton wheel. So this is a Pelton wheel that um, um, uh, forces on the blade is produced solely by turning the, the float without appreciable pressure drop. So yeah, by looking at the diagram, basically explain what is the impulse turbine. Uh, another diagram that I show you on the screen here is the bigger one. On the left hand side is more on the dam. In Malaysia, we have a few uh, hydropower station uh, that still using Pelton wheel turbine. Okay. Um, if we have time or after COVID pandemic, uh, we have time then uh, we, I try to organize some of the technical visit. Uh, maybe bring you guys to one of the hydro station. So they can see um, how all these uh, Pelton wheels work, right? But we have to wait until uh, the pandemic is over, all right? Um, the next one is just a schematic diagram. As you can see, uh, the water is flowing from the high ground into the low ground, and the water is turning the turbine. Okay, turning the turbine. So there's a generator that generate the energy. So this is turbine operation. Okay, turbine is because of the the fluid that turning the impeller. Then it generate, uh, it would then it will generate mechanical uh, movement. Then from mechanical movement it change to uh, electrical. Okay. So this is a Pelton wheel. Another one is reaction uh, turbine. This is just a cross section. So cross section means the uh, as you can see, the water is is channeled from somewhere, and then you push the blade in the impeller here, and then it go down, discharge to the other loop here. Okay. okay so this one is another photo of a reaction turbine. Um, a big one. Okay. Um, another one is the Pelton wheel theory side. So this one I go very fast, right? 
So what basically uh, the theory derived from uh, from the Pelton wheel is from the physics point of view. So if you view the, if you see the diagram on the left, uh, you having an impeller that is turning when you have a velocity. Okay? You have a velocity hitting the impeller. So the impeller will turn, uh, in this case, you will turn anticlockwise. As you can see the arrow over here, and you having a few parameter, for example, the radius of the, the mean radius of the wheel, RM, okay, from the middle of the wheel until uh, maybe the middle of the blade here. Uh, B is uh, B is the um, B is the center of the axis, rotational axis. Um, a, that you see, there's a there's a sh rectangular uh, object bottom of the screen here. This is just a reference plane that uh, help us to derive the equation. So I'm going to uh, jump straight to um, the equation. So if you see the uh, cross section of, or can say as a free body diagram. So uh, this, we start with below. You see the water jet A, uh, plane of A, B, as you can see here. On the left, A, B plane. So this is the line of the A, B plane. And then this, uh, like a fin here, is an impeller that represents this one. Okay, the, the, this one, the fin or the impeller. And here you're having a few parameter. Uh, omega, rotational, uh, rotational speed. Rm is a mean radius up to the plane of the reference reference plane, Rm, okay. And uh, previous lecture, I explained what is tangential, what is radial already. So tangential is in this direction. Radial is along the radius direction. Um, you're having a V1, a V2, and U. Okay, V1, V2, and U. And from here, um, you'll be seeing a new equation. So I'll extract something from the left, sorry, something from the right into something on the right, uh, left. So how to read this, uh, how to read this diagram on the left? You see the, the H I've labeled with A, B, A, A, B, B. What is A, A, B, B? I return you the 3D model, uh, 3D diagram here. You see the A, A, B, B. So this is actually the plane that we're looking at. Okay, this diagram, A, A, B, B, this rectangular actually is the highlighted area you see on the 3D diagram. Then after that, you are seeing the W and the W1 and W2. This actually is the input and output of the water, of the fluid. So as you can see, the one direction hitting the middle of the blade here, that represent meter. I go back to the 3D diagram. So the first direction is from the front, hit the meter blade, and then it will discharge to the side. It will discharge the water to the side. So in the 2D diagram here, you are seeing the water is coming from the front and then discharge to the side because of the design of the blade here. So you see like a bow, two bow here. So one scope divert to the top, one uh, to the left and one to the right. So you are seeing W1 and W2. So we already explained what is W, V and U in the previous section. So W1 equal to V1 minus U, W2 equal to W1, same, uh, assuming there's no loss of uh, energy. Okay. And you are seeing beta here, beta, angle of beta. Okay. So just for your info, the beta that you're seeing here uh, is will be less than 180 degree. The beta here will uh, less than 180 degree. Okay. 
what mean by less than 180 dB? What, what happen if you have a beta 180 degree? What will happen? The water will hit. This is W1. Hit the blade. The water will go back. W2. This is 180 degree. As you can see, here to here is 180 degree. This is beta. So we don't want this kind of scenario happen in our uh, system. Because if you go and back the same direction, you are creating a accumulation of uh, water and then you're going to jam the system. So we don't want this 180 degree. We want, we want the water to come in from the front hit the blade, discharge to the side, like what you see on the screen here, All right? So this is the diagram that um, explain about the U, W, and V. And at the acid there, there's a vector diagram given, W equal to W2, so at the acid, you are seeing W2 and you're having a V2 and U. Okay, you just derive one is from here. This one is this side. This arrow is this side. So this one you need to take some time to look at this diagram. Okay, basically it's quite direct. Okay, maybe you need some time to digest the diagram on the left and diagram on the right. Next is just the calculation. You have the tangential component. You break uh, V01 equal to V1. Uh, angle 1, this is, this is tangential direction. Again, uh, just now I show you what is tangent, what is radial. This is radial direction. This is tangential direction. Okay. So if velocity that is tangential direction, we can write V1 equal to W1 plus U. Uh, tangential number two, point number two will be uh, W2 cos beta plus U. This one you derive from trigonometry, meaning you derive this one into this direction and this direction. So your W2 is like this. You derive your vector into two component. So one is radial direction, one is tangential direction. Okay, so you're having this, this equation. Then we have a big assumption. We assume W1 equal to W2 and you will get this equation. Okay, it's just a mathematics. So you get uh, the equation and then recall what you learned in your, uh, when, you do, when you learn about pump, uh, the T shaft, the, the top of the shaft, top of the shaft will equal to this equation, minus M1 RV uh, tangential plus M2 R2V tangential. So this one, you need to go back to the previous slides or previous lecture video to see the derivation of uh, T-shaft, top of the shaft in the pump section. Okay, then after that, you put in the equation above, this one, inside this equation, you'll get the new equation. And also the power equation also that we derive in the pump section. So you, you arrive at this equation. Okay, this one to this one. So there are two equations for turbine. One is this one. One is this one. Okay, one is for torque, one is for power. Okay, one is for torque. Torque, you use the equation on these slides. If you want to generate power or calculate power, done by the turbine, then you use the equation you see on these slides. 
Okay, the next one, um, if you're talking about Pelton wheel, we also have an example. So uh, there's a graph on your screen now. So this graph, you have three axes. One is minus power. On the right also have negative shaft. And the middle axis is U equal to omega RM. And you're having all these uh, line here. So what does all this line mean? It given you a sign. This, this line represent power. It will show you some sign. So this curve show you power. The straight line, this one is torque. If you want to read a uh, shaft, uh, if you want to read the torque for the turbine, you read from this straight line, project to the left. Okay, you'll get, uh, and then you have a box here. Box here, it means actual power, and the circle one is the actual torque that you collect from experiment. How to use this graph? First, let me change the color of my pen. First, you calculate the U. U equal to omega RM. You have the omega value. You have the uh, radius, mean radius of the turbine. You manage to get the value of your U. From U, you project up. Let's say you project up. You touch the first line. This line is power of the shaft. You project to the left. You get power. You continue, project up. You hit a point. This line is T shaft. So you project to the left. You get T shaft value. This is a T shaft value, torque of the shaft value. Okay, it's quite direct. I repeat one more time. How to use this graph? First, you find the U, substitute the value of omega, substitute the value of Rm. You will get the value of the axis below. Let's say you get 0.8 V1. What you do, you project up, you hit this point. This curve represent what? This curve represent power. So move to the left, you get power. Next, you project up, you touch the straight line. What does this straight line tell you? Straight line is T shaft. You project to the left, uh, project to the right. You get T top of the shaft. Quite direct, okay? So you just need to identify this line represent what this line represent what. Cool, you able to understand how to use this chart? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so these are the equation to calculate the T sharp and power. So basically, um, this curve, why this curve can plot by using this equation. You plot a, a quadratic curve. T shaft, you will get a straight line like this. Okay. Um, okay, so these are just for your reading. A typical value for turbine. Beta is 165 normal, right? So this is the ideal uh, ideal number. So in operation, uh, different manufacturers have their own beta. But this is just a beginning. You want to design a turbine. This is a good start, value for a good start. And then you adjust this beta according to operation. Um, and so on. This is just a derivation. What happened if the beta is 165? 1 minus cos beta or 1 minus cos 165, you get 1.966 and so on. Uh, if you become 180 degree, which is uh, the case that we not don't want to see because we don't want our beta reach 180 degree. We don't want to chalk up our turbine. So you, you see the value will be 2. Okay, The maximum value that we don't want to see is this component become two. Um, all right. 
so if you're having a beta 180 degree, your, your wheel will stop spinning and there's no power generated just for your info. Okay. Okay. Or you can see from the chart here, you see the box, this one. What I mean by the box will tell you? Means if you increase the omega and r up to a certain point, the power will drop. Okay, the power will drop after a certain um, after a certain uh, numbers, it will drop. Why it will drop? It because of the angle of beta over here. Okay. So again, uh, this one will tell you the value. Okay, you substitute the beta. You can you can use this value, plot in uh, this equation to plot in the Excel. You can plot beta zero until a zero degree, five degree until one hundred eighty degree. You will you will able to plot this uh, curvature, uh, this uh, quadratic curve here. Uh, maximum output is V1 divided by 2. Uh, and how you get this uh, maximum power? This is the power equation. How you get maximum in the quadratic curve? You still remember what you learned in your advanced mathematics? How you get the maximum point of your quadratic curve? You use dy over dx equal 0. You will get this point. After you get this point, substitute back this equation. You will arrive at u will equal to v1 divided by 2. Okay, you will get the value of the u max will equal to half of your v1. This is more on mathematics. Eh? So that's why how you manage to find this point or this point by using dy over dx equal 0. Or in this case, you use d power over du equals zero, meaning you take this one, differentiate over du equals zero, you'll get the value of u max. You'll get, okay? So this is how you get the maximum power. Uh, maximum speed happen when your t shaft is zero maximum speed when you don't have torque inside the turbine what does it mean you imagine you have a you have a turbine like that okay turbine like that so you spray water you inject water so this one will spin in anti-clockwise direction so when this turbine spin omega rotational speed it will reach maximum when you don't have the rotational anymore meaning uh, you, you your your turbine is spinning in free free movement meaning there's a crack at the turbine shaft let's say this is the turbine shaft there's a disconnected from the shaft and this uh, this uh, turbine impeller is spinning in free movement. Okay, so this is a important concept when you work in the power plant or anything that deal with turbine. So if you if you do not get power, but in the computer or on your status graph or um, on your status screen, you are seeing maximum speed u max of the system but there's no power generated or no uh, t uh, the top reading from the top meter is zero but you're rotating at maximum it means that something happened to the uh, turbine system okay so this is uh, one of the information how you detect problem in the industry 
Okay, uh, this also is a general logic. Okay. Um, and all the employer out there expect you to know about this. Okay. So I did teach you this one. Huh? So don't tell your employer that uh, Dr. Ang do not teach you this one. Okay. The, the phenomena is called free wheeling. Free wheeling means the turbine turn freely without connecting to the shaft. So meaning there's no mechanical power uh, connected to the system. Okay, this one do not turn. The shaft here do not turn, zero. But the, the, the wheel over here is spinning at maximum. Omega at maximum, but there's no rotation at the shaft. So if no rotation means T shaft equals zero. The top, there's no top at the shaft. And you need to you need to change the system in the industry, right? Um, this tutorial question, I will expect you to go through at your own revision time. So in this one, it will just tell you, uh, you having a pattern wheel uh, and you can ignore minor losses inside the system. Uh, you need to consider major head loss. Okay. So the step of solution is inside my PowerPoint slides. Uh, this tutorial question asks you to determine the nozzle diameter over here and determine the maximum power for the system. Okay. So just go through what you need to do to solve this kind of question. You having a system, you having a system that uh, discharge water from a dam and the water hitting an impeller, hitting a, a, a turbine. So you need to uh, do a simple analysis on the system. So the flow is flowing from the uphill and hitting the impeller and the impeller is turning. Beta is given. Friction, you see the F here. This is major losses inside a pipe. And again, just a reminder, major head loss only happen in a straight pipe. Okay, don't confuse with KL. KL is minor head loss that deal with component. Okay, in this case, it asks you to ignore all the KL value. Okay, so Z1, Z0 given, Z10, so there is a differences of Z here. Delta Z, you can calculate from here. Diameter given, the purpose of diameter is to calculate area. Length is given, R is given. So let's go very fast in this example. So you use the power equation that you see on the screen here. This one. Power equal to this equation. You know that how to calculate m dot, m dot equal to rho av. Okay, m dot equal to rho av or rho q. You substitute inside the equation. M dot become the blue color section. And then for the v1, how you calculate v1, you use the energy equation, this one. So energy equation give you P out pressure. Again, energy equation consider uh, a few component. On the left, pressure energy, velocity energy, elevation energy, and on the right, also pressure energy at the input kinetic energy, V, potential energy, Z, shaft losses or shaft head. This is a shaft head. And this is the head loss that use FL over D times V square over 2G. As you can see, this equation is a bit different from 
the equation energy equation here is a bit different from the previous one. Huh? We are at the turbine. Turbine energy equation is this one that you see on the screen here. This is the turbine energy equation. Pump energy equation I show you earlier in the earlier session. So don't confuse between a pump and turbine. Turbine have its own energy equation. Pump has its own energy equation. So don't confuse. Huh? So it, when you when you print out the tutorial and put side by side, you're able to do a comparison very quickly. All right. Now, again, I want to stress, uh, in this case, you're having a large surfaces here. So the velocity will be zero and you're and the surface is exposed to atmospheric, the P will be zero. P at here, velocity at point zero, pressure at point zero, both zero. Okay, we already explained in the first session. Okay, so if you don't understand, go back to the video in the first session. Listen back to what I explained about pressure and velocity, why they are zero. And then for the nozzle output, also same. Okay, Z1 and P1 also zero. Why? Why pressure at point one is zero? Same explanation as point zero here, because it exposed to atmospheric. Okay, as the point exposed to atmospheric uh, condition, the pressure gauge over here will be zero. Okay, so I put the arrow, cancel out all the zero value. So in this case, the shaft work is zero. Eh? The shaft work is zero for turbine. So your equation reduced to Z zero equal to V one square over two G plus the heat loss. Heat loss equation given by F L over D V square over two G. How to find F? Either given, if the F not given, you need to use Moody chart to find the F. Okay. So we're back to the equation. By using continuity equation, we can find uh, the speed of inside the pipe by using a ratio. Okay, the, the Q is the same. So you, you can take V equal to A, V equal to A, uh, A1, V1 divided by A. And you can uh, change the A because A here is the pipe cross section. Pipe cross section. How you calculate the A for cross section of the pipe? Pi d square over 4. So you are having this, you can change the a in term of d because the pi you can cancel in the mathematics equation. Take out the pi, you'll get d1 over d square divided uh, times v1. Then after that, you substitute inside the equation. Just now, this equation. Okay, you after you rearrange your V, you substitute inside here, you'll get this form. Okay, you'll get this form. V equal to 2G and so on. You'll get this equation. After you get that equation, you substitute all the value. You have the gravity uh, forces, uh, acceleration, Z zero given, F given, L given, diameter given. We need to find the D in this question. So this one we do not know. D here is given. V, okay, then um, you only left out the D in term of D one. Okay. 
So I will give you the answer for V1. So you know that um, you put your answer as, okay, this one is more on mathematics. Huh? So you put your V1 equal to something about D1 and then recall the definition of Q, Q equal to AV. Then you can calculate what is Q. Q equal to 0.7 D square V1. Okay. Why we need to do this one? Because we, we will put the power in terms of U and uh, V. So you know that uh, this is the power equation. So the row you read from table, property uh, table. Q, we just change from the equation here, Q equal to AV. So you do the substitution of value. You manage to find Q equal to 0.78 D square V1. If you substitute this one, you get 999 times Q and the rest is U and so on. Beta is given, so you manage to find one minus cos beta equal to 1.866. So you'll get an uh, equation in power, this one. And yeah, you can further further uh, derive the equation by putting what is your V1. We don't want to see V1. We want to put V1 from the derivation just now. Substitute this one inside here. This one become this one. So your power is in term of V, uh, D1, D1, D1. Okay. So you put yourself in the unit of what? Um, so you can plot by using this equation, using Excel or using the online uh, graph plotter by power is your y-axis versus x-axis, okay? You're going to get this graph, okay? So you need to fill in a uh, uh, shape of all this uh, graph. On the left is your power, below one is your u, okay? By using this uh, equation, so you uh, you plot your y axis as power w dot x is u meaning this one this one okay so as you can see here u plus u is a u square is a quadratic curve you are getting y equal to a x square plus you don't have a uh, Bx plus C. So you are plotting power versus U. You're going to get quadratic curve from this equation, like what you see on the screen here. So I do not give, I already removed the value of D. So you can substitute the value of D accordingly in the equation. You'll get a different uh, projection of graph because in the equation here, I do not give you the D value. So you can change accordingly uh, to the D. Okay, so there are three value of D there. So you know, just now we define how to find the maximum value for the U. Maximum power happen when your power, you differentiate d power divided by u equals zero. You will arrive at v1 divided by two, so half of your v1. So you substitute the above equation, u equal v1. This one, you substitute inside here. Also have one u here. Substitute there, inside you'll get the new equation. 
you arrive at this one. Okay, yeah. All these steps you need to go through during your revision class, uh, during your revision session. Uh, you can look at the slides and cross check. So you will reach at the new equation in terms of V, uh, D1 and V, V1. Okay, so this is a new equation. And use back the definition of V1 to transform the equation in terms of D only. You arrive at uh, this equation and you differentiate to get the maximum power with the D equals zero because this is a, a polynomial curve. You want to get maximum. You always differentiate towards some of the value here. So you have power versus D. So you have dy over dx equals zero. You get maximum point. That's why you're using this concept here. And yeah, this is just a, just let you know it's a very lengthy calculation. Huh? It's a very lengthy equation. Uh, you'll get your D at the end. Okay. Um, this is for section one to determine the nozzle diameter of a D1 to get maximum power. Section one. Then uh, it asks you, the section B, it asks you to calculate maximum power and angular velocity of the rotor. So we just substitute the value. You will get, so because from A, you get one value, D1. You the, the section B, you just substitute your D1 value inside the power equation. You will get your power in the unit of one. So rotate, lo, rotational speed at maximum power given by omega r or equal to v1 divided by 2. So these are the equation that we use. Omega equal to v1 divided by 2r. So we just rearrange this equation. to get the omega. You'll get the omega value. Okay, you have the V1, you have the R, you have the omega, uh, sorry, you have the R, you have the V1, you manage to find the omega in the unit of radian per second. So this is how you put your answer. Uh, the next one is on the Belton. So I will let you go and read my slides. This is the impulse turbine. Uh, normally, uh, where is the application? Uh, I will give me one more minute and we will stop this uh, lecture, right? So impulse turbine, this example here is, is on the dental drill that used by your dental uh, dentist. Uh, they go and drill your uh, teeth uh, or clean, clean up your teeth. Right, polish up your teeth. So this is the the mechanism inside the drill. Right, it is using a, a nozzle and the fluid here. Sometimes they use a air air pump. Uh, sometimes you use liquid water liquid jet here. Right, and so on. So they are diagram for the WVU. So I expect you to go through this tutorial question at your own time. Okay. So all the all the working are there. Another one is the reaction turbine, also very direct from the slides. So there are equation for it. So have a have a look into all the slides, and they also they have a chart for it. Okay, uh, familiar concept with the NSD concept that we cover in the first session. Same, you refer to this graph, you get from the calculation from the equation you see on the screen here, you just follow the axis, project up, you manage to find what kind of uh, turbine that you need to use. Same, eh? then the concept, right? You project up, to show you whether you use Francis, Impulse, a Kaplan, or mixed flow radio, and so on. 
So they also want to throw a question about that. So have a have a look into this one. Uh, okay. With this, I end the recording.